Hey everyone, this is a bit of a play around with Benthos and Schema Registry Services. And I'm gonna be here as well, my name is Ash, and I'm gonna be running you through this. Okay, so what I'm gonna be putting together in this video is a fairly linear pipeline where I'm gonna be running a Benthos instance that's just gonna generate some JSON documents, uh, pulling them out of thin air. And then that data is gonna be pushed into a Kafka topic and then I'm going to have another Benthos instance consumed from that topic. And the interesting bit is that the JSON documents being generated on the left here are going to be encoded uh, with an Avro schema. And then uh, the binary Avro messages are going to be what's populating this Kafka topic. And then this Benthos instance on the right is going to be reading that binary data and then um, applying the schema the opposite way to extract JSON data from that. Um, and the whole point of using a schema registry service is that we can have this um, dynamic flow where I can evolve the schema over time and make changes to it. And the responsibility of this Benthos instance on the left is to constantly check in with my schema registry service and make sure that it's got the latest version of the schema and then apply that latest version to the data that it's consuming live. And the responsibility of the Benthos instance on the right is for the messages it's consuming, the binary data contains within it the identifier of the particular version of a schema that it's been encoded with. And what it needs to do is make sure that it's got that particular schema on hand um, that particular version of the schema so that it can correctly decode the data back out into JSON. And because we've got this live um, this live interaction with this schema registry service, uh, it means that I can I can say load a version of a schema um, and then make a change that could be something like um, adding a new field uh, because my data has, has, has changed a little bit. Um, so now we've got some new goodies. So I add a new field to my schema. That's a backwards compatible change. Um, and then eventually this Benthos instance on the left gets that new schema, starts applying it. That data now becomes part of the um, data entering this topic. And then my Benthos instance on the right will automatically see the version and obtain the schema for that new version that it hasn't seen before. And then it will start uh, being able to decode it. And I haven't had to um, touch either of these running streaming services. So I haven't had to tear them down or um, intervene in any way. They've just automatically picked up the schema and have started using it. The only thing I have to interact with is the schema registry service. Now, normally, if we were um, running this conventionally, then there would be two separate services going on here. We'd have a Kafka uh, broker or brokers um, for doing the streaming bit where we're streaming the data through, and then we'd have the schema registry as a separate service. And um, it's quite a simple thing. It's just a REST API, uh, but that has to that has to live somewhere. So either those are going to be separate managed services. Uh, maybe we're using Confluent um, for that, or the things that we're deploying ourselves. What I'm actually going to do in this demo is I'm going to be running Red Panda, um, which is an implementation of the Kafka APIs, uh, which actually includes a schema registry service within the Docker uh, image. So it's very very handy for this kind of thing. I can just spin up one thing and it will handle all this stuff, uh, which means in my demo, I'm only actually gonna be running three uh, Docker containers. Two of them are gonna be these Benthoses, and then the other one is this Red Panda. So um, let's get started, shall we? So I've got a folder. I'm gonna put this on the Benthos repo um, in an examples directory or something. There'll be a link in the description, um, as well as a bunch of other guides and things, but um, I'll just run you through all these different files. So the main one is a Docker Compose. Um, config. So this is actually going to be running the three services I mentioned. So we've got Red Panda, which is the Kafka and the schema registry. And then we've got a Benthos instance that's doing the data generating and writing into Kafka. And then we've got a Benthos instance that's reading out of Kafka and then printing the JSON resulting data to standard out. So we'll be able to see it in the logs. Um, then what I've got is a Benthos config. So this is the one that's actually doing the generating. So we've got a generate input. So we're not reading data from some other um, source. Um, we're just we're just creating it on an interval of one every second. And we're doing that with this uh, blob lang mapping. So I create an ID field. That's just a, a UUID. 
I've got a name field and to populate that I've got three example names and I'm just picking one at random uh, so I generate a random integer and then do modulo to the length of the array so we'll pick one of these um, randomly for each message generated then I've got a field gooiness and this is a floating point number between 0 and 1 uh, measuring the amount of gooiness of a particular blob um, so to populate that I'm just doing something really crude here I'm just generating random int uh, modulo 100 and then divide that by 100 um, so it's going to be very very basic uh, data coming out of this um, just for demo purposes then I've got some processes so the first processor is our schema registry encode processor so we point this to a URL of a schema registry service and we give it a subject so this is the particular schema that we want to um, apply to these messages and we also give it a refresh period and what's going to happen is when the service starts up it's going to hit the registry service to say hey give me the schema please and if that works then we'll start applying it to the data that we're consuming and then every 15 seconds we'll ask for a new version if there is one and if there is a new version we'll start applying that to the data that we're consuming um, then what I've got is a catch processor so this bit can fail for all kinds of reasons so it could be that the service was unavailable so we literally couldn't obtain um, the first schema uh, other problems we might find is that the data that we're consuming doesn't match the schema um, so in a normal pipeline I would uh, probably do something a little bit more robust maybe I would send messages that failed to a dead letter queue so that we can deal with them separately um, maybe if the particular error is because the service is offline I would just keep retrying the message um, until it comes online again and obviously apply back pressure to the input um, we've got a bunch of options here but what I'm opting to do right now is I'm just going to print a log message with the particular error um, and then I'm deleting the messages because uh, this is just a demo and I can't be bothered to do anything other than that so then finally we've got this output where we're writing to Kafka which is our um, Red Panda instance the next config we've got is the other Benthos instance so the one on the output side where we're reading from Kafka so we've got this Benthos Red Panda topic um, and then I've got a processor schema registry decode and I'm pointing that to the schema registry service the responsibility of this processor is for every message that we consume we extract the version number um, that comes with it and then we obtain that particular schema um, if we don't already have it cached uh, from the schema registry service and then we use that to decode the data now this could fail for for more reasons so maybe the the data is invalid so we can't um, we can't extract a version number or you know maybe we do extract a version number but the the data just doesn't match the schema that we've got maybe the uh, there's all kinds of stuff that can fail here um, and I'm basically just doing the same thing again laziness has taken hold and I'm just logging the errors and dropping the data I don't suspect we're actually going to see any errors on this side I might force some errors on the input side just so you can see what happens um, then what I've got is my actual schema so this is an Avro schema uh, it's very very simple you've already seen the fields that I described with the generate uh, configs well, ID name and gooiness um, ID is a string name is a string and gooiness I've put as a double go away um, and then I've got a little script here so this is what I'm going to use to post the schema to the schema registry service so I've, I've specified in my docker compose that I want red panda to expose port 8081 on my outer machine um, and that's the port that uh, gives you access to the schema registry bit um, and that's going to allow me to run this little uh, curl command which is going to cat my schema file and then inject that in a request body uh, so there's a field schema and then that just has a string which is the, the schema itself um, and then I'm piping that to JQ just so we can see the um, the result from that um, and that's pretty much it uh, yeah that's it um, so the first thing I'm going to do is the first thing that you should do also if you would like to follow me with this demo is I'm navigating to the directory and I'm just going to run docker compose up and I'm going to put it in the background um, now what we should see is errors because red panda has started but what we get is our benthos that is generating data is not going to be happy because we've pointed it to our schema registry and we've said 
obtain the schema benthos underscore example, but when we first start up, that schema doesn't exist. Um, in, a, in an ideal world, we would never have started the service um, unless, unless the schema is already present. However, this is something we can remedy. I'm just going to stop following the logs for now. Um, what I can do is I can just run my insert schema script and we get a response very, very fast from Red Panda. Um, so it's given us the ID back, ID1. I don't need to um, do anything with that because the benthos that is generating data um, will uh, automatically obtain that when it pulls for the latest schema. So what I can do now is I can follow those logs again. And we've stopped seeing our error logs from the input benthos. And now the benthos that is um, printing data out is giving us these documents. So this is this is the data that is being generated by the input benthos, and it's gone through the whole chain. So you imagine this is JSON data that we generated. We Avro uh, schema encoded it. So it was a binary blob that got fed into Red Panda on a Kafka topic. And then this benthos instance has consumed that data and is now um, writing it out to stand it out for our viewing pleasure. Now, we could just watch this for hours. Um, I'm not sure that's the kind of content people are watching these videos for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a little bit more interesting. So I'm actually going to add a field to my generated data. I'm going to add a field called bouncing. And this is going to be a, a Boolean. Um, yeah, bouncing. Notice in my Docker Compose, I have specified W, which means um, it's going to watch this file for changes. So one, when I click Save here, the benthos that I've already deployed is going to it's, it's going to automatically load that config and restart the pipeline. So um, what I've got is bouncing is a random integer modulo two equals zero. So basically, uh, half the messages are going to be bouncing, half of them aren't. So I'm going to click Save on that. And we get our little log messages to say that um, it has uh, reloaded that config and updated. So what's happening now is the data that we're generating has this new field. However, the Avro schema doesn't include it. So it's, it's getting dropped immediately even before it gets written to the Kafka topic. So imagine this is a scenario where we, we have this pipeline set up in production somewhere and we know it's reading from a source of data um, the, maybe we don't even have control over, it's just data that's coming to us uh, from some other team or something. And we've been told by them, hey, the data now includes this new field bouncing. Um, it's going to give you all this great uh, knowledge of, of, these, of these blobs. Um, and you should really start using this data because uh, it's, it's going to add a lot of value to your pipeline. So, okay, what do I do? I go to my schema and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a backwards compatible change which is a new field um, with a default. So it has to have a default, otherwise it's not backwards compatible. Um, and uh, yeah, I think we're good to go. So that looks fine to me. Um, I'm just gonna run my schema, uh, insert schema script. So what's gonna happen now is I'm gonna post that schema to the schema registry service, and it's gonna recognize that this is a new version of a schema it's already got, so we get a new version and it's going to make sure that it's backwards compatible. So if it wasn't backwards compatible, we get an error back. Um, it wouldn't allow us to update the schema. However, uh, it is backwards compatible. So now we've got a, we've just been given back the new ID. Again, I don't need to touch that at all because um, my input um, benthos is automatically going to pick up the new version. And as you can see, it already has. So we're now seeing on the output this new bouncing field. So what's had to happen here is the input benthos that's generating data has polled the schema registry service um, to see if there's a new version of the schema. There was a new version of the schema. It's then taken it and um, started applying that on the data that it's generating, written that out to the Kafka topic. The messages within that Kafka topic are binary encoded with the version number of the schema that was used to encode them. And then the benthos instance on the output has gone, oh, a new schema number. Oh, I need to go get that. Um, it's polled the schema registry service for it. And because it was successful, it's then started applying that to the data. So that's why we're now seeing this bouncing field. So um, should we try and break it? 
I think we might struggle. So you might be wondering what happens if we make a backwards incompatible change. And you're going to be very bored. So let's add a field meow. Type is string. Now, if I if I was able to um, upload that new schema, then it would immediately break things because the data coming in um, doesn't have that field and we haven't specified a default. Um, however, what should hopefully happen, and it does, is if I try and update the schema, because by default, um, Red Panda Schema Registry Service, I think all of them uh, probably default to, they only allow you to do backwards compatible changes. So we get back this message, schema being registered is incompatible with an earlier schema. Um, so it, it won't allow us to, to make a change that's going to break the input. Um, but what I could do is if I start following the logs again, what I could do is I could break my input so that we no longer adhere to the schema. So GUINESS is a field that was right at the beginning of our schema and um, it therefore doesn't have a default. So if I get rid of that, we're going to start seeing um, errors. So we get these nice error logs. Um, message cannot encode binary record because the field GUINESS uh, schema does not specify the value and no value provided. Now if I stop um, following those logs, so the service is still running, we're still getting those error logs, um, but what I could do is I could update my schema. So instead of adding a new field that is backwards incompatible, what I do is I add a new default to, oh, hold on, this is a double. So I'm just going to say zero. Um, I think that should be fine. So I'm, I'm going to specify default value for GUINESS, which means my um, my Benthos instance that was failing should hopefully eventually get the latest version of that schema. And there you go. So what happened there is we were uh, erroring pretty much every message because um, the GUINESS field was missing and we didn't have a default value, so it doesn't, doesn't adhere to our schema. Um, and I updated the schema so that there is a default, and now the Benthos instance has obtained that latest version of the schema and is now applying that to the data that's coming in. So now there's no errors anymore because we've got that default value. So what I can do is I can, I can reintroduce that field as well. And we should see that once it's loaded that new config, we now have GUINESS back in. Um, I don't know, I don't think there's much else to, uh, to show really, that's just it. Um, check out the processor, give it a play, give Red Panda a play. Um, right now we only support Avro schemas in the uh, schema registry processors. Eventually I'll add JSON schema and uh, protobuf support hopefully, um, but I probably won't prioritize those things unless people raise issues and add reaction emojis to them. Give it a thumbs up and then I'll put it on my list. Um, right, thanks for watching, um, and hopefully you'll see more videos like this in the future, um, because I'll still be around.